What is up guys? So welcome back to another video where we're going to talk about macronutrients. So I have been getting a ton of questions about it. Um, obviously it is almost summertime in the northern hemisphere and people want to cut down uh, or whatever. Sometimes it's even with bulking. Um, but they're unsure of how much they should eat, how much protein, how much fat, how much carbs, how much calories. And there's all this confusion of how much, how much, how much, how much. So today I decided to sit down on my couch and look like I am being interviewed to talk about macronutrients and where I will run through how I go about calculating my macros um, and then my macros for, certain, for, uh, for clients. Uh, and so the biggest thing though I have to let's say emphasize is it is a big game of trial and error you're not gonna hit your perfect macros head-on and uh, for people who do track their macros which I highly suggest when you do find out um, just so you can kind of learn how to intu intuitively eat and learn how much certain foods you know offer let's say um, you're never going to really hit it head on because it's just the, the truth of the nature but it is a big trial and error to see how things sit how how much you can get away with how little you can get away with and everything of that nature so uh first things first what is macronutrients so macronutrients is broken up into three categories which are protein carbs and fats so the protein portion what it does for you is it essentially fills you up one because it is the most satiating let's say uh, macronutrient it keeps you full fuller or fullest the longest um, and it helps you recover and repairing br broken down muscle tissue two is fats so fats are or carbs right I said carbs so carbs carbs are essentially the body's energy so source so the carbs can be broken up into two categories which are complex carbs and simple carbs Complex carbs kind of keep you filler for a little bit longer because they take longer to digest. And so that will be uh, your oatmeal, your brown rice, uh, sweet potatoes, things of that nature. Um, and then you have um, simple carbs, which could be bagels, white rice, uh, cereal, and other things of that nature, which are just fast acting carbs that get into your bloodstream a lot quicker. Um, perfect for digestion, re, di, digestive reasons and trying to make use of that, let's say, uh, window post-workout where your body is like most susceptible to these kind of um, foods. Uh, and then the last category is fats. So fats are essentially to do with anything with hormonal balances, um, helping your body with vitamins and absorbing those vitamins and nutrients. So they are very important as well and that is their parts to the pie, let's say. Uh, so essentially the breakdown, the let's say recommended breakdown of these is like a 40-40-20 split. So it's like 40% of your calories should come from protein, 40% of your calories should come from carbs, and then 20% of your calories should come from fats. <sighs> However, that is not necessarily how it has to get broken down it doesn't have to be that way people obviously react differently compared to others like i'm on 400 grams of carbs some people may much rather and then 50 to 60 grams of fat however other people may want 80 grams of carbs and 300 grams of i mean 80 grams of fat and then 300 grams of carbs it all depends on who you are and how your body reacts to things um again that's why i say it's a trial and error kind of situation so I do want to mention real quick that micronutrients is also massively important. This is where you get your vitamins. This is where you get, like say, your fiber, and it will help with bodily functions in terms of like, you know, helping with your skin, helping with your digestive tract and making sure you, you know, you can digest well with the fiber um, and everything of that nature. So those are like your berries, uh, you know, fruits, let's say, uh, vegetables and everything of that sort. So do not forget your micronutrients, but for today we're going to talk about macronutrients. So as we can see here, we're just going to head to Google and we're going to search up macro calculator. Essentially there's going to be a lot of different kind of macro calculators. However, my favorite has seeming to be um, the Katie Hearn one. Uh, and this is the one that I primarily use for the most part. So we're going to go in here and as you can see, it's very 
pretty much self-explanatory. Um, I'm going to use myself as a, a example. So I am a male. I am 23 years old. I weigh about 163 pounds. Uh, and I am about 5'7". Yes, I know. I am short. Uh, and again, exercise level. I'm obviously active. I lift a lot. And let's say I wanted to cut. So here we can see the macros, uh, which is about 56 fat, 240 grams of carbs, and 136, 37 grams of protein, and then 2,000 calories. So this is what I'm talking about, how people can change their macros. Uh, so essentially, I don't personally need 56 grams of fat because I prefer not to. Um, however, other people might need it, but I prefer to keep my fat's a little bit lower, so I'll probably eat at around 45 grams of fat to 40 grams of fat and actually boost my protein to my goal weight. So let's say it was 152 pounds or 155 pounds. I will essentially eat one gram of protein um, towards my goal weight just to make sure I can keep that body composition, just to make sure I can keep that situation um, and make sure that the protein can support the let's say amount of body weight I want or the amount of muscle mass and body weight I want and uh, from there I can kind of break down how much let's say calories that will be and trying to remain within that 2000 mark range so it's kind of like a seesaw so I'll give to take and I'll track everything just to see if I could possibly hit that marker if I have to go lower on fats by all means if I have to cut out some carbs in order to maintain my fats and that 155 grams of protein uh, to keep that 2000 calorie mark that that would, that would be it so now let's see if I were to be on a bulk or a gaining phase like a hard gaining phase we can see here that the macros change um, again as I said before I would probably in this case of scenario uh, boost up my protein a bit because if I'm bulking and I want to hit about 170 pounds which is my actual current uh, goal I would obviously not want to be eating at 160 grams of protein because I obviously want to keep myself fuller again despite me having so many carbs uh, I just like to hit that one gram of protein for one gram of body weight uh, for one pound of body weight rule um, it just fits me and it suits me and then again I will go on with the carbs fats and everything of that nature so that's essentially where I get my macros real quick if we want to see what a recomp will be like it's around my maintenance let's say uh, and then from there your recomp allows you to change your body composition and basically let's say uh, try to maintain as much muscle mass or even gain muscle mass whilst losing fat so you eat around maintenance which gives your body enough nutrients uh, to push the weight and force yourself to grow while at the same time kind of remaining in a deficit possibly and losing that kind of fat. However, I do not recommend recomps all the time. You definitely have to be able and be ready to be strict, one, and two, ready to push yourself tremendously uh, or else it just won't work for you and it won't work out for you. Um, but it is doable and it is possible. You can get, definitely get a lift. Um, you can lift your, your chest area, your glute area while toning down your stomach. Um, it's definitely doable. So if you are up for that, you know, please comment down below. Let me know. Message me on Instagram, uh, Stingo underscore Lopes, and we could definitely talk about it and if it suits you. Um, so by all means, do that. So real quick, we're also going to go back and we're going to go check out some of the other options. I know one big one would be bodybuilding.com. Uh, and with bodybuilding.com, the macro split could be possibly be different. However, again, like I said, you could see what fits you the most. The cool thing about bodybuilding.com is it explains everything. So I highly suggest if you have any questions after this video, please do comment down below. However, you can also read a lot into it, a lot more into it um, at bodybuilding.com and what if it fits your macros is, what fats do for you, what protein does for you, and everything of that nature. 
All right, guys, so that's essentially how I fit my macros, and I see uh, where is the ballpark range I should typically be in. So, again, with that being said, you also have to track your macros, in which there's tons of apps out there. One of which is um, I know my Fitness Pal is really big, and then My Macros Plus, and uh, again, there's plenty of other ones, but My Macros Plus, for example, is the one I use. I don't know if that's going to focus. But it's that orange um, orange app with double M's and a plus. And essentially what those what that will do for you is you'll be able to track, let's say, your daily intake and every food you have, you have to weigh it out and all of that just to get the exact numbers of what you are eating. So why is that important is because if you know what you're putting into your body and you're essentially tracking what you're putting out of your body, um, you'll be able to make that deficit or that surplus. So I do have to stress though, if you're trying to lose or gain weight in terms of body weight, let's say on the scale, um, the biggest part is calories in, calories out, like I've stressed before. You need to be in a deficit if you want to lose weight. You need to be in a surplus if you want to gain weight. However, the macros do play a role in the body composition. So how full you're going to look in terms of your muscles, how your muscles are going to repair. So if you're actually going to be able to maintain muscle mass on you um, and, and that piece to the puzzle. So you definitely need to make sure that you're hitting your calories and stuff like that, but macros are also important just to make sure you are going to get the physique that you want. With that being said, you're going to learn as you're counting your macros, you're learning your macros and, and what they are and learning your foods as you're tracking it. There's obviously going to be foods that are more suited towards your goals than others. People can hit their macros, which is called the it's, if it fits your macros, with plenty different types of food, um, you know, with burgers, with fast food, like Chick-fil-A, you could track it, they give you the macros, I think Burger King and McDonald's does, and you can fill your macros with that, however, the calories that come along with it are more than likely going to be a lot more damaging um, and heavier, let's say, so at the end of the day, despite you hitting your macros, you're going to be in a bigger, let's say, caloric surplus than you actually intended. So while you are choosing your foods, please choose wisely to the cleaner foods in which you'll see um, as you go because they will give you the most, the most bang for the buck and that will allow you to be in that deficit for you to lose that weight. So at the end of the day, that is pretty much it. Um, if you do have any other questions, please contact me. I know a lot of people already have and I'm trying to clear it up as much as possible with this video, but it is kind of hard in some ways. Um, but essentially, as I said, you need that little deficit if you want to lose weight. So that 300 to 500 calorie deficit, um, which the macro calculator should take into account. And then if you want to gain weight, that 300 to 500 calorie surplus at the same time, hitting your macros, again, adjusting them as you go. So the thing that I do want to mention as a example of how to adjust your macros is week in, week out, so every week or every two weeks, um, checking your weight, one, checking photos, two, because sometimes the scale doesn't always tell the whole picture. Let's say we're on a cut, I'm hitting about 240 grams of carbs, 22,000 calories, 150, you know, let's make this hypothetical, 170, uh, 60 grams of protein, and 40 fat. Within the next week, if I'm not losing weight, or within the next two weeks, if I'm not losing weight, at that kind of macro split, I will essentially remove 20 more grams of carbs, which then will entail me removing some calories. And then from there, I'll kind of see how I look in the next two weeks. If I haven't seen any more progress within the next two weeks, I will again drop my carbs again down. If I see that I'm really, really starting to lose my energy and my grip within the gym, I'll then start to lower the fats. Um, little by little and, and that essentially you're going to play that skill as I was saying live learn trial and error uh, and that is essentially how you adjust your carbs and if you're gaining you'll do the, the reverse so you'll add carbs little by little 20 20 grams you'll see what your body weight is the following week if you gained as much as you wanted to if you didn't you would just add another 20 and so on and so forth so it is a game of trial and error 
I'm hard, it's hard for me to directly tell you what you need to be eating and how to go about that. However, this is the best explanation I could possibly give in that nature. So if you do have any more questions, please, please let me know in the comment section down below. Follow me on Instagram, give me a message, give me a little shout out. So I'll say what's up and if you have any more, let's say direct questions for your particular situation, I would love to answer it. So I will see you guys in the next one. Um, which will probably be a bit more vlog style kind of thing of a lift. Uh, again, I tried my best in explaining this. I hope it gave some clarity to you guys. I know it might be a little bit longer than usual. Um, but I appreciate you guys watching. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Please have a great day. Much love. See you guys, alright?